school? School's almost done. You guys excited that school's is almost done? How many of you guys, is finals week? Finals week for anybody? Next week? Some of you guys next week? Tomorrow? Just tomorrow? Do any of you guys, I, I, this was for me only my senior year. Actually, <laughs> that's not true. I just never qualified for this. In my school, if you got A's, you didn't have to take finals. Is it, okay. What's that like? I'm curious. <laughs> that, <laughs> that would be awesome. I, I graduated on the senior curve and not proud of that, but true to life story. Um, man, I missed you guys last week. I was only gone one week, and I feel like I missed an entire lifetime. Uh, I do, like, I, you hear me say that, and you're like, yeah, yeah, I, I for real do. I love bragging about you guys. I got to hang out uh, with a bunch of my youth pastors and my small group leaders. It was like, man, it was so nostalgic. It was like a big old youth group reunion, and it was, it was fantastic. And so uh, it, it was just fun getting to tell some of your guys' stories and, and who we are and what makes up the capital and what makes us family. Uh, and it, it was really, really cool. And, uh, yeah, a lot's been going on. I, some of you guys, I heard, uh, got state medals while I was gone. That's pretty amazing. A couple of you guys got uh, Julian signed his letter of intent today. That was pretty awesome. Congratulations. That's a big deal. Uh, and then I, I, I didn't see him earlier. I don't think he's here tonight. Uh, but one of our very own Terrence was the Mill Creek prom king. Come on. That is awesome. Uh, man. It's just cool. I like, it, it's, it's awesome seeing you guys. If you're going to do stuff, you might as well win stuff, right? Like, you guys aren't a part of, like, mediocre world church. Like, this is victory world church. Like, if you're going to do something, win it. And so, uh, I think that's awesome. Uh, speaking of being out there and doing great things, our very own Montel Jordan. Um, one, he dropped a new song yesterday. That was pretty awesome. Also, he is going to be on the American Idol finale uh, performing. So I think that's pretty cool that one of our very own staff members and family members is going to be performing on American Idol finale. That's, I'm just like, that, that's crazy. That's a pretty big deal. Um, tonight, we're going to do something a little bit different because if, if, I'm, if I'm reading you guys correctly, uh, some of you guys have a lot going on in your brain right now. You're like, you're here but not all the way. Like, I could tell the way some of you guys were worshiping. It was like, some of you guys were worshiping, and it was like, you forgot where you were for a second. It's like you're studying for chemistry, but your hands are raised, and you're like, you're, you're like rhyming in your head, trying to do, like, you're visualizing your cue cards, and, you know, you're like, can I do a cheat sheet? No, I can't do a cheat sheet. That's, I'm worshiping. Bad idea. And you're like, you're, you're thinking about finishing the school year. And so, uh, tonight, I'm not gonna speak to your head so much. And so, if you're like, I can't handle any more new information. Fear not. I'm not, not going to do that. Uh, but what I want to do is kind of have a moment with us together tonight. And so we're gonna, I'm going to do my best to, to create a moment for us and kind of maybe give some, just some coaching, some dad talks along the way uh, if I can. And so what I want to do is kind of address something that I hear quite a bit. Uh, and I, I want to kind of explain some of that and also have this be a moment for you guys. So how many of you guys were here uh, it was probably, probably about a month or so ago, right before spring retreat, which seems forever ago, by the way. Doesn't it seem like a long time ago? Uh, right before retreat, we did a night called Seven Questions, where I, we took a live poll, and I asked a bunch of questions, and I made you guys kind of respond based on how that was. Uh, that was more for you guys for your own sake, as to like, how am I as an individual person thinking about certain situations in life. Uh, tonight we're going to do something very similar to that where I'm going to ask you guys a bunch of questions. I'm going to ask you to re respond to said questions. Uh, but this is more, it, just as much for the sake of others as it is for you. And so some of the ground rules, if you're newer with us, like we don't want to put you in any kind of awkward situation. And so don't feel like you have to participate. Um, but I would encourage you to participate uh, because, like I said, uh, we say this all the time, but you, you're going to get out of life what you put into it. And so uh, let me kind of make sense of this. This is a recently broken barber's chair that, that was borrowed and hopefully still works. Let's see. Kind of? I'm not going to sit on it, that's for sure. Um, but here's where I got the idea. I got this idea from a, an older movie. Um, how many guys... Not how many guys. Does anyone in the room know the movie Freedom Riders? Anybody? Oh, look at you guys. 
Man, movie buffs. All right, so if you haven't seen Freedom Riders, uh, came out several years back, was set in uh, the, the early 90s, even though it was made several years later, which again, side note to the side note, they played the whole Montel Jordan song in that, in that movie. I just watched it again recently, like the whole movie. Usually if, you're, if your song's in a movie, you get like 10 seconds. They played like the whole song. It was pretty cool. Anyway, back to what I was saying. In Freedom Riders, it, it portrays the true story of an inner city teacher uh, who is assigned to one of the uh, toughest parts of South Central LA uh, right after the uh, voluntary integration happened. And so what happened is you had all these like rival gangs, different races, all in the same class, and she was trying her best to bring unity. Um, and there was one moment in that movie where she gets out some duct tape and she makes a line and she asks them a bunch of questions and it's basically come to the line if and would, would ask a bunch of questions. Like her first question was, come to the line if you've listened to the latest Snoop Dogg album, uh, which was like brand new back in that day. And so you're like, oh yeah, like we think we're different, but we're actually pretty similar. Um, I kind of took it in a little bit different mode. Uh, Barber Chair, here's the idea. Um, if you know anything about the military, I, I believe this has changed recently, but for years and years and years, one of the first things you would do when you entered boot camp is you would get your head shaved. It was uh, for a lot of reasons. One, it was because uh, a lot of diseases back then were spread through hippies not washing their hair. And so they're like, you're going to shave your head because that's disgusting. All right, we're, we're just going to take care of this, make sure we kind of just cut out all disease. And it was helpful. But also, it, it was a way of symbolizing whatever your, your history was, that's going away. And we are moving forward together as, as American soldiers. And it was a way of them being unified and coming together under one banner being the military. And so uh, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to shave all of your heads one by one. Uh, just kidding. That would be weird. If you're newer, you're like, I knew this place was a cult. That's crazy. Not going to do that. Um, what we are going to do is symbolically in our hearts have m moments to step to the chair as a, as a way of saying I can identify with that. Uh, so we're going to ask some lighthearted questions. We're going to ask some serious questions. And again, uh, some of you guys don't participate with m much, and you think you're hiding, and it's so funny because you know I'm higher than you guys, right? Like, I can see, I can see you guys. And I, we say this all the time. You're like, you're so not good at being sneaky. Your faces are glowing. Like, I can see you. I can still see you when you're crouching down. Like, you're not hiding under the chairs. Don't hide under the chairs. Um, but here's what I would say. Uh, there's a lot of us that have been through some stuff, and you not sharing or you not participating could hinder someone else's freedom tonight, okay? Because what we're trying to do tonight is show you that we're not as different as we might think, that, that we actually have a lot more in common than we do that's different. And so uh, if I hit something that, that's like maybe a little bit difficult for you, but you can relate to it and you don't go, that might hinder someone else from coming, or they might feel like they're all alone in that. And that's the opposite of what we're trying to do tonight. So I, I would encourage you guys, get out what you put in. We, I want to encourage you guys to participate, leaders and everyone. Uh, I want you guys to participate because I, I don't want you guys to think that there's any, there are no perfect people allowed in the Capitol. Like that, that is a rule. No perfect people allowed. We want to be the realest, bestest versions of ourselves that we can possibly be. And so we're going to kind of have some fun with that tonight. Is that okay? You guys handle that? All right. So why don't you guys go ahead and stand up to your feet. Um, you can kind of be in any of the aisles or, or on any of the wings, but just kind of leave this area to kind of be the chair zone, okay? You don't have to come up on stage, um, but you can kind of just come to this area. If uh, you're newer with us, a lot of times this would be what we would call, a lot of times at the end of a service, we, we do what's called altar calls. Those are just a, a fancy way of saying, like, I need to respond to what's going on, and sometimes the best way to, to change a heart issue is to tell your body to go first, because a lot of times if you tell your body to go, the rest of your heart just kind of tends to follow. So um, also, you'll kind of have to make, make way, so it's going to be a little bit awkward. You're going to kind of have to press through. If you're in this aisle, there's a lot of people still trying to get forward, so maybe kind of come forward. It might be better to kind of come, come to the wings a little bit more than the aisles, so kind of come on out, come on out, but still kind of keep this area uh, Free, free space. So here we go. You guys ready for this? I'm a little bit nervous. I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, question number one is this. All right, so again, not 
the goal for tonight is not to like judge people, to embarrass people. That's that's not my heart at all. But uh, how many of you guys like you you went into retreat or a retreat thinking like I'm not going to share nothing? And then you get to that silence covenant, and all of a sudden like I can't believe I just shared that. Like anyone else had those kind of moments? This is like this is like an appetizer version of that. Okay. Uh, you're not going to have to say anything. I'm not going to put you on the spot. I'm not going to single anyone out. Uh, but again, some are lighter than others. But this is your chance to just acknowledge I can identify with that. I can relate to that. So question number one is this. How many of you have still not seen Endgame? Hey, no judgment. No judgment. That was mean stuff. No mean stuff. Okay. No judgment, no judgment, no judgment, no judgment. This is a safe space. This is a safe space. I care about you guys. Okay. <laughs> All right, who's that? Where, where does it stop? No, no, still no? No, no? Yes or no? You've seen it? Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Cool. That was a, that was a really terrible practice round. You guys all messed that up royally, okay? No judgment. <laughs> Respond with honesty. Come on, people. This is a judgment-free zone. I understand your pain, okay? I can't, if, if you responded, look at me, look at me, look at me. If you responded, look at me. See, this is a, this is a, a, a practice in attention span, okay? <laughs> Which is like yay big, okay? So help me out, because if, if it takes that long on everyone, then we're gonna do like three questions and be out, okay? So I, we, we need help kind of doing all of this just a little bit faster. That's why we did a practice run. I understand your pain, okay? And I might understand that you don't care. I have a confession to make. I saw it. Come on, I saw it, all right? But whew, this is gonna be tough. I've never, <laughs> Batman dies. No, that was, that was funny. Um, I've never seen Star Wars. I said it. I've never seen Star Wars. And I probably never will. I know that that cuts me out of certain parts of society. There's certain analogies that I'll never understand. But I, I know what it's like to miss out. Okay, thank you. You guys, can, you guys can go back. You guys can go back. Next question, next question. All right. All right. I know. Thank you. Not alone. Solidarity. Okay. All right. Shh, shh, shh. Remember like 30 seconds ago when I was like, this part needs to go faster? All right, we can do this. I believe in you guys. I believe, I believe. That's a faith statement. I don't believe, but I want to believe. Lord, help me in my unbelief that we can, we can do this. All right, this, one, this one's going to be, um, now our toe's kind of toes in the water, okay? Like this not, doesn't, isn't going to cost you too much, but you are going to have to be super honest to answer this, okay? This, this is a serious one. Um, and again, most of them won't spark the conversation and the reaction. It'll just be more of like a, a response time. But um, come to the chair if you currently or have at one point thought of the Capitol here as being a, a clicky, pa clicky place, a place where there's insiders and there's outsiders that you're, you either get it or you don't, Okay. All right, all right, fair enough. I'm looking around, that's cool. We have our, I'm seeing some, some new people, some of our classic non-responders, and that's okay, I said, I, I laid the ground rules, that's fine. Um, but look around, people, like, we can't all be clicky. Like, we can't all have friends and all think we're all clicky. You guys understand this, right? Like, this is just common logic, all right? This is 90% of the room said we are clicky. But it's not you. Like, what you're saying is, I'm not clicky. But everyone else who also responded to this, they're clicky, right? 
So here, let me kind of break this down, okay? Let me kind of break this down. That is a trick of the enemy, okay? Let me tell you the beautiful part about the Capitol and Victory World Church. Uh, we would probably be considered the most diverse church on the planet, okay? That, that doesn't happen by mistake. It's very purposeful. Even in a context like this, just look around. They're, like, you are not going to have to go more than like two or three people away to find someone who doesn't look like you, act like you have the same background, for sure doesn't go to the same school. Um, and so this is, this is the perception. We will continue to be a place that reaches all people from all schools, all home schools, all private schools, all magnet schools, all public schools, every race, creed, gender, background. Like, we are going to reach Hamilton Mill. That is our mission, okay? You will always feel like an outsider. And I, hate to, I wish I could tell you the five steps on how to not feel like an outsider. Truth is, you will always feel like an outsider. Not here. In life, you will always feel like an outsider. In fact, Jesus says, take heart. This world will mistreat you and alienate you and make you to feel like an outsider, but take heart because they judged me first, okay? So when you feel like an outsider, when you feel like you don't belong, when you feel like you've been rejected, congratulations, you now know what it feels to be like Jesus, okay? Second thing is, and I'm not going to give this much commentary on all of it, but second thing is this, it is your job to fight that. One person at a time, it is your job. I say this every single time. I do, this is like one of my cheat codes with anyone who's ever been in a discussion group with me. I, I always beg you one discussion group at a time. Shout out to group one, shout out to super group, shout out to all the other groups that have been fantastic. Um, the, just get your friends. It's, it's, it's good to have friends. It's good to have deep friends. That's okay. There's a certain part of clickiness that you would perceive as clickiness. That's okay. There's a certain part where, where it gets bad. Just make an agreement as a friendship group for five minutes every Wednesday. We're going to break out of our social circle, and we're going to go meet someone different that we don't know super well. Maybe you've seen them 152 times in a row, but you still don't know their name. Just make a pact with your friendship group. We're just going to mingle. We're just going to go around and get to know some few people and maybe partner up if you're scared. How many guys, this isn't one of the questions, but how many guys from time to time feel a little bit of social anxiety when it comes to meeting new people, right? Congratulations, that makes us all human. Go in partners and just meet people, okay? So that's it. That's question two. Go ahead and back to your seat, back to your seat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> you don't have to go all the way back. Just kind of leave room to leave room. All right. Um, the reason why I asked that as like the first semi-serious question is like that was the premise. That was going through my head that made me want to do this night is because there's this perception that like, somehow we're not family. But at the same time, we all feel a sense of family. And so uh, the rest of the night is to kind of prove that point on how much we have in common, okay? So this one's going to be, uh, this, one's, this one's heavier. We're kind of going in waves. This one's heavier. Um, but come to the chair if uh, you have had the unfortunate situation of watching your parents go through a divorce, Again, leaders, students, everyone. <clears throat> so the, if you're down here, I just want to say thank you guys. Like, that was the first one that, like, for real, for real, like, this, this question cost something, and I get that, so thank you. Um, again, imagine if, like, you guys all chickened out and, like, two people came out here. Because you guys have all gone through that feeling where divorce is common, but just because something's common, hey, be quiet, thank you. Just because something's common doesn't make it normal, okay? And I want you guys to hear that, because I know what it's like to feel the hurt that like, I feel like I'm the only one going through this. Why doesn't anyone else seem to be affected by divorce? But the truth is everyone is, okay? And so I just want you guys to know, just look around, like you, you are not alone, and just because it's common in society, doesn't make it normal, and it doesn't make it easy, and it doesn't mean that it's okay, and it doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt, okay? 
And so I, so I get that. And so I just want to say thank you guys. Like, again, no perfect people allowed in this place, okay? Uh, and so thank you guys. You guys can, can go back. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And that's just the starter. Um, here's the deal. It takes, it takes people making public choices like this over and over and over to say, I am determined to make a difference in my generation, all right? And uh, again, that was a practice run to a few of the jerks that weren't paying attention. Stop that, okay? That was, that's your warning. Um, this, this means too much to me to let you guys be insensitive on a night like this, okay? Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, next question. Uh, you have been a victim of bullying. You have been a victim of bullying. I'm under an air vent. All right. Thank you again. Um, see, this is what I'm talking about. Like, ju just because something's common doesn't make it normal. Like, how many times when, when that happened to you, did you feel like you're the only person on the planet? You know what I'm talking about? Like, I'm, I'm looking at you guys. I, I've, I've heard your stories. You know, like, I've, I've seen this going on. And you feel like you, you don't know what to do, that you can't reach out. Um, Man, this is a place, and, I, and I'm, looking, I'm looking around. Like, there are beautiful, talented, smart, uh, gifted, like, amazing people that, that are down front. Like, it, and it just, it just makes me think how much more so that it, it's just the reality. And I'm, I'm also, I'll look up at the ceiling so I don't awkwardly make eye contact. I'm also seeing bullies in this, in this circle, right? Like, like, that's the thing where it's like, it's just the reality that hurt people hurt people. And it doesn't make it right that you got picked on, and it doesn't let them off the hook. But it just, it just proves the point that we're all broken people, that we, we've all got our mess, we've all got our issues, we've all got stuff we're going through. Uh, and, and the biggest thing we can do is make sure that no one has to go through that alone. That if you're on the other side of it, that, that you don't tolerate it. And there's some people in this circle that I love dearly, and you know who you are, and you know who you are because me and my wife and another leader got on you severely a couple weeks ago about the same issue, and most of you had nothing to do with it. Uh, this is why, it just special message to that small group of people. This is why, because this is not okay. It's not okay for people to not feel welcomed in this place. Like that, that is something for me, like absolutely not okay for anyone from, I don't care, I don't care who you are. Like I, I do not care how evil you are, what, what's going on. Like you have a place here, okay? You have a refuge here. It doesn't mean I agree with all your lifestyles and all your decisions and that you can be that way forever but you've got a place to call home here, okay? And so uh, if any, you have any friends that are hurting or lonely, like you need to tell them about this place. So thank you so much. You guys can go back. This is why, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is why I'm so intent on filling this place out. Like it's not because I want to be able to say we have a bigger youth group. It's because I know there's, for every person in here, there's dozens out in your schools that don't have a place like this to call home. So Thank you guys. Um, and again, please, please do me a favor. Keep trying to, keep, please keep trying to make the conversation to a minimum so we can just kind of like have this be one fluid moment so I don't have to like keep reeling you back in. But thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Um, all right, well, let's, let's erase some of the tension in the room. Come to the chair if you have no idea what you want to do with your life. You're just like, <laughs> seniors, that's okay. Leaders, <laughs> that's okay. Like. Can we just be honest for a moment? No clue. Okay. Thank you, guys. Again, I'm just trying to show that we have a lot more in common than we have different. Because isn't this another one of those things where you feel like, Am I the only one that doesn't know what I'm going to do after high school? You're like everyone else. Like, you ever been at a lunch table and everyone's telling you what school they're going to and they're, they're like celebrating their acceptance letters and you're like, that's awesome. I'm still deciding, weighing my options, weighing my options. That's a, let me just give you a good answer. You're weighing your options, okay? Um, and for all of us, like, honestly, that's why, like, 
God is much more concerned with who you are than what you do. Like, that's the realest answer I can give you guys. Um, just keep pursuing God. Like, it, it's going to be fine. When I was your age, <laughs> I had no idea. At best, I, I was hoping to make lots of money being a drug dealer. Uh, that's, that's it. That didn't work out. <laughs> Some of you guys don't know my story. You're like, huh? Different story, different day. Um, God had different plans. Uh, but even if, even if I, even if at best had my plans, uh, I can, I can tell you, even in my good days, being a public speaker was, was not on the agenda. Okay. So, uh, as long as you want to pursue God wholeheartedly and trust him with your future, uh, no matter what happens, that, that is the place you want to be and you'll have no regrets. I promise that. So thank you guys. You can go back. You guys are good at clapping. You guys are clappy, happy people. I like it. Yay, clapping. Where, where's, my, where's Amanda? Where's my wife at? There she is. Oh, she's far away. Loudest clapper on the planet, my wife. All right. We're so rhythmic. I love it. Just a bunch of rhythmic, clappy, happy people. I'm going to keep coming up. By the end of it, we're just going to be this long list of, of analogies. All right. Uh, where was I? All right. Uh, I kind of asked this one, but this is going to be a little bit like a follow-up question, but I, I am curious on this one. Um, yeah. Uh, I was going to, like, try to frame it up a little bit better. But um, your come to the chair if your family consists of your biological mom and dad, and even if they're not perfect, they do their best to love Jesus. Like, you have siblings and birth mom, birth dad, married together, trying their best to love Jesus. Okay? Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Um... All right. Thank you guys for sharing. Um, gonna be honest, I'm a little bit confused because most of the room responded to divorce and most of the room responded to this. But um, <laughs> yeah, so um, non non divorced. Did I? I should have said non divorced. Um, anyway. Uh, I'll just take this one at face value, I guess. Uh, this is not what I would have expected. Uh, so let this be a little bit of a coaching moment then. Uh, this does not represent society, okay? So here, here's my heartbeat is that I, I think our demographics, if you don't, if it, demographics is a fancy word for the, the people makeup of any crowd, the, the demographics should match the culture's demographics. Um, which means, I say this all the time, but if, if you're in this place, man, like, again, go home, give your parents a hug and a kiss, tell them thank you, thank you, thank you. Like, you are, you, it, culturally, you are in the, the vast minority, okay? Um, especially, let alone to have mom and dad in the house, uh, but especially if they're trying to love Jesus best they can, uh, that, that's a big deal. Uh, what that tells me is we need a, a whole bunch more people in this room that don't fit that category. Okay, so uh, peripheral people, like you would, you, would, you would relate to this, right? Like how much do you wish you had a fi family dynamic that was made up of mom and dad in the house that loved Jesus? Like that, you know what I mean? Like that, that is something to be treasured. So uh, man, if we're gonna be a place that, that makes people feel welcome, uh, we just need, if we hear that, uh, if you guys are in this place, again, let me just tell you guys, if you hear of your friends going through divorce, even though you might hear it a million times, that's hard for them. It's super duper duper hard for them, okay? Uh, if they don't know who their dad is or they don't know who their mom is or uh, they're, they're gone, like that, that doesn't mean it's easy just because you hear it often. And so be good friends to those people, all right? Like be, be good friends to those people. Uh, be brother, be a, be a brother, be a sister, be family best you can to them. So thank you guys. You guys can go back to your spaces, I guess. Um, do, 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 do. We're going to clap on rhythm. All right, uh, next question. And, all right. I belched. 
no, no. That was, the, that was the pause. That's why I don't wear headsets a lot, because if I wear headsets, then you just got to deal with the belch. Um, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I was going to do something, but I'm not. All right. Um, next question, and this is a... Uh, Answer this question on the, you can answer this two ways. There's a shallow version of this answer, but answer, answer the deep one, if, if this will make sense. Um, because there's an easy way for everyone to just be like, yeah, of course. Uh, but well, I guess I shouldn't have said that, but whatever. All right, next question is, I wish I or my family had more money. I wish I or my family had more money. All right. So, that's crazy. All right, so let me, let me kind of make a little bit of sense of this. The reason why I asked this question, um, kind of looking, looking to the people who responded and people to, who didn't, uh, People who responded, I know some of you guys have money, some of you guys don't. I, I see people on the perimeter, some of you have money, some of you guys don't. Uh, reality is, you will never have enough money in this life. Like, there, there will always be wants, there will always be the need for more. Uh, and here's, here's why else I wanted to say that, spe specifically uh, for a lot of people in Hamilton Mill. There's a lot of fake rich people, uh, and what I mean by that, not, not like character fake, like I didn't, I didn't mean to like put everyone on blast. What I mean is this. There, there's a lot of uh, facade of wealth that happens in Hamilton Mill, okay? Uh, and, I, and I see this a lot. Uh, nice house, maybe nice car, maybe nice clothes, no furniture in the house. Uh, nice house, multiple families living in the house. Um, nice stuff, but uh, you're, both your parents are unemployed and have been for quite some time. Like, there's a lot of, I, I'm here, so I gotta keep up, even if it's not truth, even if I gotta take on debt. Uh, and, and so that, that's why there's not an obvious response to this question, because there's, there's people that, that are out there that maybe your family doesn't have the most money, but you're content, uh, and there's people out there that, that have a lot and, and still want more, and, and everywhere in between. Um, but that it's, it's never going to make you guys happy. It, it really, really isn't. And, and uh, I loved what Landon was saying of just like, man, be good with money. The, the key is be good with your money. Be wise with your money. Um, I've been faithful to tithe and to do my best to honor God with my money. And uh, that's, that's a, it's a promise from God. Like he will, never, he will never leave you without. It doesn't mean you're going to have a lot. And it doesn't gonna mean you're going to have what you want. But it means you're gonna, you're gonna you're gonna have you're gonna survive. There's I can't tell you how many times uh, my my life doesn't match the bank account. How many how many times where I've been down and out and someone's heard from God to reach out and, and just be a blessing. And I, I've seen I've seen this happen. And, and I'm I'm scanning fast because I've seen a lot of people in this room in the inside that responded and on the perimeter that have helped friends go on retreats. Um, help people get, get nice things that they don't have, just bless people just because. Like, we are a very generous place. I love telling you that. Um, we, we just got done building a really fancy, nice, expensive playground uh, just to be a blessing to the community. Um, we give away uh, an, an extreme amount of money, and I'm, I'm glad that we get to do that. If you're part of the church on the weekends, you hear us every Christmas time, and it's not just at Christmas time, but we, we highlight it more at Christmas time. We do something called Christmas Give to the World, where we just bless people. Um, and, and I also want to tell you guys this, because this is a part of the church that you might not know about, whether you responded to this or you didn't. Um, if your family is going through something major financially, uh, parents lost a job, uh, you've been struggling for a while and just can't seem to make it, uh, please let me know. Like, I, I know that's kind of embarrassing and humbling to, like, reach out. But, uh, again, uh, you might feel like you're the only one going through that. I've helped countless people. Like, I, I want to tell you, as a pa one of the pastors at Victory, we love helping people as much as we possibly can. And so, um, and I'm, yeah, man, like, we love doing that. That's not a shame thing. Uh, that's the church being the church. Well, the church gets a bad rap uh, thinking that we're all about getting people's money. The, God set up a plan where if everyone tithes, all of the needs are met. The problem is 
not enough people obey that command, and therefore the church isn't able to do what we do. If everyone tithed, there'd be no hurt. That like everyone would be, we we'd be able to cover everything. But but uh, I want to tell you, there's a lot of tithers, and we can help. So please reach out. So thank you guys for being honest and responding. Love you guys. That one's tough. And again, maybe some of you guys just answered super shallow and you're like, I want more shoes. <laughs> so me too, right? Let's just, let, we should just have a shoe exchange program so where we can just have a collection of shoes. All right. Where are we going? All right. Ooh. All right. This one's going to cost you. This is like a, ooh, and it's serious, all right? Um, whew, this, why, did I, why did I put this one in the middle? Okay. People outside of the Capitol, come to the chair if you can relate to this statement. Come to the chair if people outside of the Capitol probably don't know I'm a Christian. People outside of the Capitol probably do not know that I'm a Christian. That's the realest, bravest, super amazingest. That's cool. That's tough, man. I, I get that, man. Oh, man, do I get that. Like, that is, that's, that's tough, man. And it's, and it's tough to have that realization. I think it's tough to uh, go through that moment, especially, like, if you're like me, who needed like major life change, and you're still trying to balance all those worlds, where you're like, man, my friends are jacked up, like, and you, but you're not quite sure they're the only friends you have, so you're not quite sure you're willing to to lay that on the line for Jesus. But uh, man, like I said, j just look around. You get, you got family, and honestly, there's probably more people that should have responded, and that's okay. But like, again, you get out what you put in. Like, I know this one cost you guys something, so thank you guys. Um, but yeah, I just want to let you guys know, like, that's a tough decision, but. Uh, you got a bunch of people that, that would celebrate you. If you lose all your friends in your school, your workplace, your family, whatever, you still got family here. So thank you guys for responding to that. Appreciate it. Love you guys. That's a tough one, man. I, like that one, that one's still vivid in my mind of, of having to have those conversations with friends and, and immediately losing friends. Like that's, that's tough. But again, I can tell you, no regrets. No regrets from that. All right, <clears throat> moving right along. All right, another, another tough one. Um, come to the chair if you have been mistreated directly because of your race or the color of your skin. This one, uh, man, <laughs> this one always breaks my heart, and th this one sucks. I hate this one, um, but thank you guys for responding. Uh, yeah, th this one, if, if you were fortunate enough to not respond to this one, just, just open your eyes. Like, it's 2019, but this is still a very real issue. Like, this is... Uh, yeah, we, we have not licked racism, it, which is sad. We live in Atlanta. Like, come on, man. This is Martin Luther King's hometown. Like, we, sh we should be the one that gets this right. Like, this is, this is the melting pot of the world. This is like the new uh, New York. Like, this is, this is where people come from other countries to find the American dream, to find refuge. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of people can't, can't do that. Um, this is the one that came. Uh, I'm not going to specifically say the YouTube channel because I don't agree with most of what they say or what they're about, but it's very thought-provoking. They, they did a, a webisode that was similar to this, uh, but they asked a bunch of white people. It, it was all white people, and, and they talked about this. And um, they, the way they postured it was, uh, have you ever experienced reverse racism? And I... I know I'm white, so just like, let me explain. Let me explain this first. All right, uh, there is no such thing as reverse racism. Okay, like if you don't know, 
it, if you are white and that's like, huh? L let me explain that. To say reverse r racism is a racist statement, okay? Like, to say that the only form of racism is that normal people get to be racist against other people, that's racist, okay? Anytime someone judges you because of the color of your skin, that's racist, okay? It's not reverse racist, it's racist. Um, and and it, it's awful that it still happens. And if, if there was one that victory will die on a hill for, it's, it's this one. It's reconciling cultures. It's bringing us together. Um, some, of, some of you guys grew up in victory, and you don't, you don't realize, it, realize this, but 80% of churches in America are one-race churches, 80%. Um, and, the, and a lot of reasons that, that a lot of those churches are growing is because they only have to reach one type of person. Here's the template. Here's the prototype. We're going to do everything we can to reach this guy. And they just do it over and over and over. This is a lot messier, okay? Th this, this is uh, a much more beautiful journey of discovery. Like, it, it's not, um, what I've heard from a lot of you guys is there, that in your schools it's very tolerated, that, that, like, you get along, but your lunch table looks very similar, right? Like, it's like your classes are diverse, your schools are diverse, but your lunch tables are not, okay? Um, this, and I don't want to make light of this, but this should be the one that this room can conquer the easiest, okay? Because if you grew up in victory, like, you just don't understand how good you have it. Like, you, you just don't, you just don't. And you never will, and that's okay. Um, you, you just won't. This is a beautiful place. Uh, we need to do more than tolerate. We need, we need to celebrate the differences. We need to show the world what the church is supposed to look like, okay? And here's, here's, what, here's my, here's my uh, but, uh, uh, there's a more exciting part. There's a better part to clap. Well, what, um, when the church, when, when people in your schools put two and two together on who, who is the capital, I love watching the confusion on their face because they're used to the church guy. Whatever that means, whatever culture or race they are, that's what they think of when they think of church. And they go, wait, you go to the Capitol, and you go to the Capitol, and you go to the Capitol? I need to check out the Capitol, all right? Because society is becoming more and more mixed, okay? Uh, to, to even break it down as simplistic as color of skin is getting more and more complicated. Like that's, which is just dumb. Just because we're white, we come from a lot of different countries. Just because it happened more hundreds of years ago in America and a lot of uh, this crew, which I love, uh, the, the, the challenge and the uniqueness of being first generation American. How many first generation Americans are in this place, okay? <laughs> Meaning you lived your whole life in America, but your parents are from a different country. All right, I love that. I should have done a separate response. All right, I'm going to do that real quick, real quick. All right, if, if that's not you, you guys can go back. If you are first generation America, I want you guys to, to stay here. I want to say something to you guys real quick. Your parent, you are born and raised in America. Your parents are from somewhere else, okay? I don't relate to this, by the way. I wish I did. I am, I am second, second generation. My grandparents came from uh, different countries. But uh, real quick, real quick, for, for, for you guys that did, did respond to this, um, you guys have a double set of challenges, and I just want to acknowledge that. Like, I, I know what it's, I don't know what it's like. I have understood and I've come to learn what it's like to, to be raised simultaneously in America and also have your parents try to raise you in, in their culture and the challenges that come with that. Am I, am I right on this? Like, you, you see your American, a lot of times, uh, by and large, this, it, like, American has become more and more passive uh, especially in their parenting techniques, and other ones not so much. And you guys, a lot of times, um, you hear like the lack of consequences from some of your American friends. <laughs> like, that's messed up. Because if that happened in my house, like, and I just want to say I get that. Like, uh, so you guys get it on on two levels, and how much more the important it is to just make sure like we, we celebrate our diversity, we celebrate our differences, we reconcile our cultures. That uh, doesn't mean. We are, not, we are not a colorblind place, but we are a place that believes we're one race in God. That when we come under Jesus, we are one human race. doesn't mean we ignore the cultures, we celebrate the cultures, but above that, we embrace the kingdom culture. And you guys would understand that more than anything because you try to have to, you guys uh, balance trying to honor two cultures 
at, at least simultaneously. And so, uh, man, let's just celebrate one more time being one race <laughs> at, under God. So thank you guys. You guys can go back. Appreciate it. All right. Oh, man, this is going to be fun. All right. This one's going to be tough just like it was a few minutes ago. So I'm going to... If you guys can help me out, I'm going to try to get through the last couple because I do want to, I want to try to get all of them. So I'm going to try to get through the last, do less commentary. That's my fault. Um, <laughs> come to the chair if you currently or in the past could identify yourself as a church hopper. You are a church hopper, meaning you go to church on Sunday. Maybe I'll check out this youth group. You go to that youth group. Maybe FCA on Fridays. I'm a part of Young Life. Like you just like you are a professional church goer now or in the past okay all right all right cool all right I won't take real long uh that was more just a, I, I, I didn't think it was going to be a whole lot because again like uh yeah for, for a lot of reasons that just doesn't doesn't happen a whole lot and I get it I've been I've been I've been that part of that is okay uh, but I do want to give, like, all of us just, like, a little bit of nugget. If, if you get a lot of voices, we, we live in a society that everyone has, just because everyone has a voice doesn't mean it's a valid voice. Like, just because you have a YouTube channel, like, doesn't mean, doesn't mean you're educated. And just because you're loud doesn't mean it's good. Um, so just, just be cautious of, of that, okay? What I would encourage you guys, like, for the rest of your life, when you leave this place, go somewhere else, or, you, or you're at Victory for the rest of your life, Man, put down some roots and add to the vision of the, of the church that you call home, okay? Add to it, because we don't need any more nominal, like, box-checking Christians in our country. We need some wholehearted Christians. And it's harder and harder to do that. It, basically, if you had to answer this question, where would you bring your friends if they wanted to go to church? And you're like, uh, what day is it? <laughs> Wrong answer. Like, you should have a family that you have a place to, to bring home to, okay? So thank you, guys. You guys can go back. Thank you for your honesty. Appreciate it. Reason why we don't have a lot of that is because a lot of times when, I, when it's obvious and it's going to distract more than help, I just bless them to go be back where they came from because it just causes more confusion a lot of times. So, um, yeah, just, there's lots of good ch churches. Just pick, pick a church. All right, where was I? All right, a couple more. Come to the chair if you have ever felt insecure about yourself after looking at social media. All right. Man. And doesn't it, doesn't it seem to start so innocently, right? Like, it's, it starts off so innocent. You just, you follow accounts that, like, of maybe something or a style or a personality that you aspire to be or, like, just someone you respect. Next thing you know, like, you can't stand that person. You're like, uh, and again, it, it never changes. It, it never, ever, ever, ever changes. Um, we, the reason why I bring that up is... Uh, that is a battle of your generation, and it's a new battle to your generation, okay? Um, I, I didn't know what, it, I, I grew up with technology, um, but I know the, what it's like to, ha to have with and have without. I understand what it's, my generation, people my age, experienced the, the breakout of new technology and whether or not we're gonna adapt to it. You guys didn't have a choice. You were raised with technology, raised with social media. The, the, a lot of times the first form of social life was via social media, um, which, which makes it in some senses better, but in some senses a lot worse. Uh, a lot of you guys that responded to being bullied, um, when, when I was growing up, you at least could go home, right? And nowadays, like, they, they can hunt you down, right? And that makes it a lot harder. Um, you do whatever you're gonna do with social media. I'm not gonna tell you how you should and should not interact with social media. Um, there's some obvious stuff that you guys are well aware of, but I will tell you this. Um, all throughout the Bible, there's a principle of fasting, and it was about the, the most important things in life. You guys, as emerging generation Christians, are gonna have to learn how to fast media of all types. I'm not saying you need to give it up forever, but I'm telling you, if, if you want to be a lifelong follower of Jesus, 
you will need regular seasons in your life where you delete the apps altogether. I'm, I'm just telling you. And more times than not, your life will dramatically improve with the lack of social media in your life. <laughs> FOMO, FOMO is fake, like it really is. FOMO is a false fear. The fear of missing out is false. Like, you feel like you need to catch up with what's going on. Um, yeah, I could go on for that a long time, but you guys can go back. Uh, be smart. All right, um, two more. Th this, is, this one I, like, I debated because um, it, it, it could seem like I'm trying to accomplish something that I'm not trying to accomplish. I, I'm, I'm honestly trying to take this one at face value, um, and it'll make sense with the next two questions. But uh, come to the chair if, and I'm not going to go into detail, but uh, again, answer this one on, on the deepest of levels. If, if you moderately identify with this, uh, don't feel like you have to come, but like this, this is an opportunity for, for some healing, I believe. But come to the chair if you've been let down or deeply hurt, keyword deeply hurt, by a parent or a close relative. Um, and I'm not gonna go into details what that might mean, but that could be emotionally, that might be physically, um, that could be abandonment, that could be because of their presence, that could be because of their lack of presence. Um, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and explain the next one. I, I am in no way s saying, like, see, I told you all families are jacked up. That, that's not what I'm trying to say. Um, but what I'm, again, what I'm saying is, like, that still hurts. We, we, live in a, we live in a society where everyone acts like it's okay, but the reality is we each have a story. Like, every single one of us. Um, that, after retreat, when I get to give a recap to the whole staff, what I love being able to say uh, I always share a few stories that, that, are, that have kind of like spread throughout the, the, the group of the family, some, some obvious public stories. Um, but what I always tell them every single time is, if you give me enough time, uh, for, for instance, I think this last retreat we had, what, 176 people from Hamilton Mill, something like that, students from Hamilton Mill go on retreat. If you gave me enough time, I could tell you 176 stories. Um, and, and I want you to let you know, like, it doesn't matter how big we get, we are going to insist on making environments where every single person can be heard, can be uh, loved, can be welcomed, can be uh, supported, and, and to, to find a sense of family. Again, uh, we can't replace your family, but we do want to be able to provide a sense of family. Uh, we we want to be able to provide that. The church should be the, the family. All throughout the, the Bible, especially the New Testament, we re are referred to as brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, and we want that to mean something. We want that to, we want that to matter. I'm not saying... Give up on your family. I'm not saying abandon your family. Some of you guys have um, what seems like hopeless situations. Um, I just want to say, like, it's not over. Uh, I, I get that it hurts. Uh, man, I get that it hurts. Just looking at, at some of the stories. But, uh, and, and I get that. I, I really, really do. And uh, that means a, a million different things. Like, that, it really does. Just, man, oh, I wish I could just, like, I wish I could just, like, transplant the emotion of what I understand right now to every single person in this room to understand how special it is to, to be in a place where we're not perfect, but I think throughout all the, if I let every small group leader come up and just kind of scan, we could, we could be like, yeah, between us, we know on every single story deeply. Um, if you haven't shared any of the deep stuff with anyone in your small group or any of your small group leaders, I'm telling you, you're missing out on freedom and healing. I, I'm telling you that because the Bible says when we confess our faults, which means our, our mistakes, our sins, and our hurts with one another, that's when God begins the healing process in our lives. And that's when the enemy can no longer say, no one's going to understand. You're going to feel judgment. You're going to be condemned. Those are all lies from the enemy. When you get that out uh, to someone who cares, uh, there's, there's healing that takes place in that. So uh, you guys can stay here if you want. I guess you can walk away if you don't respond to the next one. And that's going to be awkward, but that's okay. That's honest. Uh, but next, last question as the band makes their way towards the front is this. Last question is, uh, come to the chair if the capital has made a significant impact in your life. Like a significant impact in your life. Like this is, this is a place that's special to you guys, all right? 
Um, I'm not just saying this because I'm the youth pastor. Like, this is a special place. This is a special church. This doesn't get to happen everywhere. Um, yeah, like, it, it just really doesn't. There, there's a, there is no shortage of churches that will entertain you, maybe even entertain you better, maybe feed you better, maybe game you better, um, I'll maybe funny you better. I don't know, but, but you're going to be hard-pressed to find a, a group, a place that will love you better than the capital, um, and we, we take, we try, we create that culture, like we're, we, if, if we believe that we're family, that we're once family, we're always family, and so, uh, again, I didn't want to, I didn't want to have too much head knowledge going into tonight, um, but we need to, we need to celebrate this more, okay, um, I, we, again, we need, to, we need to let down the guard, I get it, in your schools, you got to act tough, you got to have your defense mechanism, I, I get all that, you can't let people in, I understand all that, but here in this place, like, man, a high five and a smile with people you don't know will go a long way. I'm telling you guys. Like, if you can just train yourself, I promise you. Like, let's just practice. Can we just smile? Can you just show me your best smile? Like, can you just look like a friendly person? Right? It's like some of you guys, you love Jesus. You just need to remind your face sometimes. <laughs> 